Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post on tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. Before we get into today's video, I did want to announce that I am doing a giveaway. I am so excited. It is the 200th episode on my channel. I am so excited that we've made it this far and that you guys have been super supportive and have shown love throughout since the beginning. Huge shout out to all of you guys and thank you guys so much. So for one lucky winner, I will be sending you the limited edition pro acrylic kit from Kiara Sky. If you have not seen the recent launch on their cover powders, you have missed out. I'm going to be using one in today's video, so I hope you guys enjoy that. That being said, I am going to be leaving the instructions on how to enter down below in the comment section. It will be the pinned comment, so make sure you guys fully read that. In order to enter, I will be announcing the winner in my next video, so stay tuned and good luck to you guys. Now getting right into it, I am starting off with a pre-prepped practice hand. I have pre-applied my not polished C-curve tips in the square shape. These are full sculpted. I absolutely love the perfect square shape to them. But I am going ahead and taking my hand file and just lightly filing the sides, making sure that everything is nice and flush to the natural nail. And then I am quickly just squaring off that tip as well. Sometimes whenever you cut them with your nail tip cutters, they can be a little bit slanted or a little bit curved. So I'm just making sure that I'm making everything nice and squared. Getting right into our acrylic application. For today's video, I am using the size 14 acrylic brush from Kiara Sky. Along with that, I'm using their acrylic monomer as well. Now this really pretty color that I am using, as you can see here, is from their Sea Glass collection. They have recently launched these and I am here for it. It is their jelly-like or see-through color collection, which I have been obsessing over. A ton of you guys absolutely loved it. I did do a swatching for you guys on a live if you missed it. I'm so sorry, but make sure you turn on your notifications so you do not miss out on future random lives. And if you did join, thank you so much much I had tons of fun talking with you guys but I am using berry bomb from that collection I am using that just on the tip applying it in a thin coat now if you want it to be a little bit more opaque just go ahead and layer that color but I really wanted that see-through color to be very transparent so I'm gonna go ahead and ombre that with one of their cover colors as well. This one is called Roscado. I also swatched these in that live for you guys. So I am going in and applying that near the cuticle area and then just gently blending it down with that Berry Bomb acrylic. I did want to mention that cover acrylics are extremely necessary when it comes to your acrylic collection being a nail tech. They are absolutely going to be used probably the most so if you have clients coming in with french nails they want ombre nails they want just a simple nude natural nail if they want gel polish over top you're probably going to gravitate towards a nude color as your base as well so highly recommend you guys figure out what colors you want to add to your collection and keep those they are going to be crucial as part of your career so I'm taking that same Roscado color and applying that on the ring finger. I'm going to fully be covering that with that color. I'm starting off at the tip, applying the bead, and then gently working it down towards the tip. And as you can see, I like to focus a lot on keeping the shape nice and perfect. This is going to minimize the filing at the end. And I don't know, I feel like it's just so much more satisfying when you really lay that as perfect as possible now i know a lot of you guys are going to be curious as to what my thoughts are on these cover powders and the sea glass collection i absolutely love both of them from just working with them the first time i feel like the first initial use that you work with a product is going to be the determining factor of whether you like a product or not. And as you can see, they are very easy to work with. They blend very well. The colors are really pretty as well. So definitely a must on my books. Again, I'm gonna be going ahead and laying that acrylic as neat as possible, working from the tip towards the cuticle area. 
that is my personal preference if you prefer to work from the cuticle area down to the tip that is definitely okay to do so just always find what works best for you i am going ahead and applying the last bead up near the cuticle area holding the finger in a downward position and then just gently blending the rest of the product down and as you can see everything just blends so so nicely Once again, taking Berry Balm, placing that in the middle section of the nail, bringing it very, very gently with light tapping motions down towards the tip. I'm basically letting the product work with itself while I am just lightly tapping it in the direction that I want it to go. I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the index finger as well. Taking that same color, we're applying that on the index finger right in the middle of the nail. And then we're gonna be working with the product down towards the tip. And I did wanna mention when creating ombre nails, for me personally, I find it a lot easier to create a more flawless ombre effect if I have that middle section nice and thin. So I will build up the thickness that I want at the tip, but in the middle section, basically where the tip meets the natural nail. I will feather it up towards the cuticle area and make sure that it's nice and flush. Very, very thin. And then I go ahead and use my nude or my cover color and blend it down towards that. So my thought process is the thinner the product is, I will be able to layer on my nude or my cover color a lot easier and the transition will be a lot smoother. That being said, I always say use whatever method works best for you. I know so many amazing nail techs will create a flawless ombre effect without doing this, but for me, I definitely struggle if I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off that nail and then we are going to be encapsulating these nails.
Now to encapsulate this set, I am using the clear acrylic from Kiara Sky and we are going to focus on the ombre nails. I've mentioned it before in my videos, I like to encapsulate ombre nails specifically because you work so hard on creating that ombre effect. And if I go in directly and file with my e-file, more than likely I will remove some of that. So I want to make sure that I'm protecting it. Not only that, specifically with this set, I did make them a lot thinner because I want that translucent color to be really see-through. So I'm making sure that I'm adding the thickness that I need for this set with the clear powder. Once everything is nice and dry, I'm taking my Kiara Sky Unicorn Drill. This is a rechargeable e-file. I have her at a speed of about 9 to 10,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using the Kiara Sky 5-in-1 Bit in the color Rose Gold in Medium Grit. But they have tons of different options on their website. Highly recommend them. They are very affordable and extremely good quality. So I'm just taking my e-file and just very lightly filing that cuticle area, making sure that it is nice and flush to the natural nail. That is absolutely necessary to prevent lifting. And then I'm just very lightly taking that and filing the surface of the nail. Again, very light pressure at the same speed. I'm not trying to remove bulk product. I just wanna try to smooth everything out as best as possible. Now taking my hand file, I am going to be filing the sides, making sure that everything is nice and straight. I just alternate from the left to the right, right to the left, and then we will be filing the tip as well. Now flipping the nails around to look at the nails from the client's perspective has been a game changer when it comes to perfecting my shape. So I definitely recommend you guys do not skip this. Try it out and you will definitely see a difference. So whenever you are looking at the nails specifically from your view, a lot of the time they will be slightly crooked or slightly off when it comes to your client's view. So you turning it around is going to let you see it from a different angle which will help you catch anything before your client points it out and you definitely want to make sure they're nice and perfect so that they have zero complaints now i'm taking the kiara sky buffer and i am going to thoroughly buff these nails making sure that the surface is nice and smooth for our nail art application
Now cleaning the nails off with a lint-free wipe and some Young Nail Swipe. This is going to thoroughly remove any dust left behind while prepping the nail for our nail art application as well. Now for today's nail art, I am absolutely recreating this super cute nail trend going around on all social media. I will leave the artist linked that I saw a specific set from, but I'm basically taking the Kiara Sky Gel Liners and I am going to be using that for today's video. I am using the lighter pink of the collection and we are starting off by doing a slanted line and then a little bit off to the right as well and then we're infilling that area. And of course, always, always, always cure whenever you feel is necessary. I am popping it in the light whenever I think I need to. And for that process, I am using the rechargeable LED light from Kiara Sky and leaving it in there for a full minute. Whenever working with gel liners like this, they are extremely pigmented and you really want to fully cure that through so that you do not get any smudges or any mess ups. So make sure you guys are fully curing that in your LED light. Now I'm taking the darker pink and applying that up near the cuticle area, again slanted line up towards the right area. And then we're just filling in the rest. Now we're taking the black liner and outlining that once everything is nice and dry. And then we're gonna be adding the stitches as well to that line, which gives the perfect fall Halloween vibes. Now for our ring finger, we're going to be doing a spider web and to do so, I am also using the black liner, starting off with one line, one right down the middle and then one off to the left and then we're going to be very easily connecting those together. I feel like spider webs are one of the easiest and most effective designs for Halloween time. I feel like you just can't go wrong, it just gives that cute little touch to a Halloween set. Now we're gonna be doing the curved lines going downwards so that it gives that nice spider web effect. And I'm basically just doing three of them and connecting the lines together. gonna go ahead and cure that once it's out of the light I'm adding pink I feel like I just needed to add that pink in there as well so I'm basically going over all of the lines with the pink and I'm slightly trying to layer them off to the side so that you can still see the black on the background
Now I thought it would be really cute to create a girly spider as well. So I'm taking a neon pink crystal, applying that with a Young Nails brush on glue, and then we're gonna be adding the little head, but this one's gonna be a smaller crystal in black. Again, some Young Nails brush on glue, applying that. And then we're gonna be drawing on little legs. Once the glue is dry, you wanna make sure you wait till the glue is fully dry. I've definitely done it before where I go directly in and it will ruin your brush, so make sure you wait. Now we're gonna be doing some blood splatter, but in pink, of course, to flow with the design. To do so, I'm taking some fishnet. I have shared this hack with you guys to do splatter without a blowing onto the nail, which I personally do not like doing at all whatsoever. So I'm taking the fishnet, crinkling it up in my hand, bunching it up basically, and then dipping it into the color that I want, and then just splattering it onto the nail. I'm basically just pressing it in there lightly, and that creates the splatter effect. Nice and easy, effective without blowing spit on your client. Now we're gonna be doing the same design as the pinky, but on the index finger, and then we're flipping it essentially. So the pinky was done on the left side of the nail, and then the index finger is gonna be on the right. I'm also switching around the colors a little bit and I am adding some of the lighter pink down below and then we're gonna be adding that on the right hand side as well. Again, make sure you cure that whenever you feel is necessary. I go ahead and cure after each color just to be safe so nothing blends together. And then once I'm done with that, we are gonna be adding the black little lines and stitches as well. Once everything is nice and dry out of the light, we are going in with our top coat. I am so sorry, but I had to test this top coat out. I know, I know, I always do matte, but I 
received the velvet matte top coat from Kiara Sky and I was like, I need to use it. I just need to use it. So we are using it for today's video. I am thoroughly covering the surface of the nail very carefully going around our tiny little spider. You wanna make sure you don't get any top coat whatsoever on your crystals or the shine will go away. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that in a very thin layer over top of every single nail. And then we're gonna be curing that in the light for a full minute. I like to do the longest setting on my Kiara Sky LED light. So just to make sure that everything fully cures throughout. And of course, for the top coat, it is a definite win, you guys. It is super, super matte, and it definitely has that nice velvet feel to it. But that basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to enter the giveaway. Good luck, and I'll see you guys next time.